music stopped. We're live. Y'all didn't tell me you were running the music? You know, this has happened to me before, that I have been introduced, and I was in the dressing room. And they said, hey, you've been introduced. And I'm like, really? You could have told me. So, <clears throat> let me finish this uh, text to Kevin Perkins. There you go. Wow, we are live. And on the spot, evidently, with the Blue Plate Special, I'm Andy Andrews. You know that we are live when we have miscalculations like that. Whose miscalculation was that? Was that mine or was that y'all's? I thought someone came and told you there was two minutes till we got started. Yeah, but telling me that it's two minutes until starting time and telling me we're starting, I mean, two minutes is a long time. In my mind, of course, this is the mind that actually got on the interstate one time. It, you know, a lot of people have gotten off the interstate to get gas and then gotten on the interstate and gone the wrong way. I've actually gotten off the interstate to get gas, gotten on the interstate, went the wrong way for 75 miles before I realized it. Now, you may think that uh, that's crazy. I just consider it deep thinking, deep thinking. And I was in deep thought a few minutes ago, and the, those two minutes, I tried to stretch those two minutes. Marcy Crosser Taylor, hey, from Pasco, Washington. You love the professional notice this morning? Yeah, we had Tom Ziegler, Zig Ziegler's son. The proud son of Zig Ziegler. That's how, that's how Tom signs his, his stuff. Isn't that cool? Sandra Torres, hello. Ah, if you're with us for the first time, we'd ask that you click your notifications on there and turn on your notifications on your phone. Uh, that way you'll be notified every time we go live. Um, Rebecca Peters from Paso Robles. Billy Morgan from Kerrville, Texas. Jeanette Quinton. We have uh, people in the in the studio audience today, too. Hey, how are you? How are you? Who have, um, <clears throat> that is Judith DeWitt from Spokane, Washington. In the studio, we have Rick and Dean. Is it Dean? From Greenwood, Indiana. Where is Greenwood? Is in, 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 in comparison to Indianapolis. It's kind of like, just get real close. Right, lower, lower, okay, okay. But do you guys uh, do do you guys do the the daylight savings times? Daylight savings time. Yes. Okay. All right. Wayne and Robin Sanders from League City, Texas. Hey, hey, League City. Now, where is League City? Uh, wherever it is, I'm sure it's 200 miles from Amarillo. Every time, every time I'm driving in Texas, everywhere I am, there's a sign that says 200 miles from Amarillo. So, anyway, we're glad to have you guys here. And uh, so, who else we got? We got uh, you. Now, who's this? Oh, are you, for, are you with them? Robert and, and Jamie from League City? Oh, oh, all right. Well, we're glad to have you guys here. And Tammy Nance is here from Virginia. Uh, Judith DeWitt, yes, I am late. I am late. We got a great show though. This is going to be a great show. We we're going to talk about death, and so that's always a fun topic. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be going to be a lot of fun. Um, Dina Kilpatrick. Dina says, since I have a sinus infection, I decided to come laugh with you rather than sing along with Mark. Is Mark Lowry on right now? Is Mark Lowry? Like broadcasting opposite us? He's trying to overshadow you. Well, 
He probably can. You know, Mark has a big personality. Dan Andrews. Hey. Chris Newfield from Dallas. And in studio, we have Diane, not Dean. Okay, well, you know, along with not telling me that we were on the air. Oh, and it says, tell her to write better next time. <laughs> How about that? Wow, they're right here. They're right here. And <coughs> Lorraine Weaver from Norman, Oklahoma. Mike Pomeroy, and you messing with scammers videos. You know, we we have, uh, those guys are getting a, a little fierce, you know? I mean, they're just like, they cuss you out and hang up on you really quickly if you try to mess with them. But we're, we'll get you another scamming with the scammers videos. Mike Keller from Fort Wayne, Fort Wayne, North of Indianapolis. Jeff Herring, hey buddy. It was great seeing you guys on the Life Skills Project last last time. And um, I want to hear what you've done to play at a different level. I want to hear. Betty Rayford, usually I have to tune in a little bit late because my pastor has an online devotional that doesn't finish before you come on. Well, Betty, we're always here when you're ready for us. We're just waiting for your pastor to finish his online devotional and when you want to tune over we'll be here serving the lord you know i asked um i asked mark lowry one time that reminds me mark lowry i said something about it's just something about football and mark said yeah i you know, i don't i don't follow football i said really Does, like not college or pro he said, I'm too busy serving the Lord. <laughs> like, okay. All right, buddy. Donald and Evelyn Perry from Belleville, Ontario, Canada. Lauren Garaflo from Gulf Shores. Yes, my ambassador. Okay, Joy Walker. Hi, Andy. Hi, Kevin. We're, we're about to get started on this uh, thing. What we've got here today, I've done a little research. <clears throat> I got... I got kind of tied into this the other day, and uh, I, I, I ran across something about it. It some crazy way some person died in in BC or was put to death or something, and uh, and I thought, really? I, I mean, and so I, I thought, I wonder how many other weird ways people have died or been killed, and you know, in history. And then as I started reading about some of these and started jotting down some of the, the stories, I thought, I'm not sure the whole story is told here. I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm not sure that what made the newspapers was the real reason that they died. I'm, I'm thinking it was, <clears throat> it was something else. Now, I, I give you an example. So, so what I would like to do here so I list, we were going to list some crazy ways that people have died in history. And, and then we will explore, Matthew, we'll explore what could be the real reason. What would be the reason behind the reason that nobody really knew? All right. Okay. Sounds All good. right. Uh, now, 400, in 400 BC, Zeusix, who was a Greek painter, died of a heart attack while laughing. So he died, it was reported that he died of laughter at a portrait he had just painted of the goddess Aphrodite. The elderly woman who commissioned it had insisted on modeling for it. And he died of a heart attack laughing at the painting he had done of the elderly lady who had insisted on modeling for a commissioned portrait of Aphrodite. Now, I think that 
I doing a little research back into Zusik's uh, childhood, uh, I found that um, because he had lied a couple of times to his parents, that there was a time that he took a, a vow in childhood, a vow to always be truthful and never hide his emotions. And so he, he vowed to always be truthful and to not hide anything. And so so normally you would have, you know, you would have looked at that painting of a wrinkled old goddess of love and you would have said, ah, this looks wonderful. But he had taken a vow of truthfulness. He could do nothing but laugh and it killed him. So he didn't really die from laughter. He died from telling the truth. Okay, in 430 B.C., Empedocles from the island of Sicily declared himself to have become a divine being. Thus he was no longer mortal. And to prove he was an immortal god, he leapt into Mount Etna, an active volcano. That's what the newspaper said. <clears throat> the real reason was what happened right before he jumped. Um, he had, he had uh, fawned over this woman who, who that he thought was like too good for him. And she thought herself too good for him. And she was just out of his reach. And it, it was a callous remark that, that was made by the woman he loved when, when he declared himself a god. And, and she said, what? And somebody said, Empedocles. He declared himself a god. And she said, Empedocles? He's not so hot. <laughs> and, and then he was. <laughs> and he was. He proved it. Just to prove, to prove. So he, he died, really, because of a callous remark of the woman who lived. 258 A.D. Uh, this guy's name was Lawrence. Now, he became St. Lawrence after a barbecue. <clears throat> he was roasted alive on a giant grill. And this was during the persecution of Valerian. And while being slow-roasted, he joked with his tormentors, turn me over, I'm done on this side. <laughs> I'm done on this side, turn me over. And he is now, St. Lawrence, is the patron saint of cooks, chefs, and comedians. In the Catholic saintship, he is patron saint of uh, cooks, chefs, and comedians. But, but actually, it, that, that's just what was reported in the newspapers. But nobody, nobody reported why he was actually put on the grill. You know, why? Hmm. Why was he slow roasted? They just reported what he did when he was on the grill. But they never really uh, reported. And, and if you look into his story... <clears throat> He, he uh, it really was annoying. Lawrence was very annoying, and he would, uh, he, he, uh, he, he told bad jokes all the time, and people couldn't get away from him, and he was really put on the grill because of two questions he asked after everything he said. After everything he said, he would say, did you hear what I said? Was that funny or what? And finally they got tired of it and they, they put him on the grill. <laughs> and he said, turn me over, I'm done on this side. Did you hear what I said? Was that funny or what? So, these are, these are we're just uh, trying to get to the bottom of why these people really died. Okay, not just, their, not just the deaths that were reported. 362 A.D., Marcus 
of Aruthsa. Okay, now this was a Christian bishop and martyr. Marcus of Aruthsa was hung up in a honey-smeared basket for bees to sting him to death. That's how he was put to death. And you think, what, what, what is this Christian guy? Why are they hanging him up? Wait, wait, what would, what would be so? What would he do that would be so egregious that they would hang him up, smear honey on him, and let bees sting him to death? Well, let's find out. I'm sure it was warranted. Well, I I dug deep and I found that. Early in his life, in his church work, he was a youth minister at the church, and he was the supervisor of the playground, and when all the kids would play, and when they would get stung by bees, they would come to him, and he would always say, it doesn't hurt as much as you think. It doesn't hurt as much as you think. It'll be over in a second. It doesn't hurt as much as you think. And finally, they got tired of it. And he did something that required uh, execution, and they said, I know how we'll execute him. And as he was uh, being swaddled, swathered with, with honey and the bees were coming around stinging him, they were, they were saying, it doesn't hurt as much as you think. That's what they were saying to him as he died. True story. This is why he died. In 892 A.D., Sigurd the Mighty, the second Earl of Orkney strapped the head of his defeated foe, Mel Brigge, to his horse's saddle. This was the head of his defeated foe. And Brigge's teeth rubbed against Sigurd's leg as he rode, and it caused a fatal infection. Now, if you get to the bottom of it, the reason he really died was he was clinging to traditional wisdom. And as we know, traditional wisdom is often traditional, sometimes not wise. The traditional wisdom he was clinging to at this point was keep your friends close and your enemies closer. And he was he had already defeated his enemy, but he was still trying to keep his enemy close, and he had him so close that the guy, like, just filthy mouth, bit him, and and that's the real reason of death. There's always some, there's always a rest of the story. You know, I'm sure that if Paul Harvey was still alive, he would have used these. And now you know the rest. Of the story. Paul Harvey. Good day. Okay. Christie's here. December 1st, 1135. Henry the First. While visiting relatives, Henry supposedly ate too many lampreys against his physician's advice causing a pain in his gut, and ultimately his death. What is that? Do you know? A lamprey? Yeah. Yeah, it's, a, it's an eel that, like, sucks. It's kind of like a combination of an eel and a... Who, who is that you used to bleed yeah, with? Yeah, um, I can't think of the word. A, uh, a leech. A leech. It's kind of a, a lamprey is kind of a combination of a eel and a leech, and they... They suck on you. And so um, he ate too many of them. And, and ultimately, it, it was against his physician's advice, but he ate too many of them, and they ultimately caused his death. And if you look back in his life, you will find that uh, this guy was incredibly polite. He was incredibly polite, and he, he was way too polite. Now, see, me, me, 
there, there's one thing I, I, I do not, I'll just tell you right now, I do not like red beans and rice. I don't know why. I just don't like them. They gross me out. I just don't like them. And if I ever get invited to the White House and they serve red beans and rice, I will say, Mr. President, I'm an adult and I hate red beans and rice and I certainly am honored to be at the White House, but I am not eating red beans and rice, even for the President of the United States. But this guy, this guy, he was not like that. Now, it was a well-known fact, it was a well-known fact that, that there were three things that he did not like to eat. He did not like liver, he did not like sushi, and he didn't like lampreys. He didn't like lampreys. And when he showed up at dinner that night, they were serving lampreys. And he said, oh, lampreys, yes, yes. I'll, I'll, here, here, I'll have some. And he ate some of these. Oh, would you like some more lampreys? Yes, yes, I will have some. But he hated them. And he died. So being too polite, that'll get you. So that's why that's why he died. Not really for eating too many lampreys. He died because he's too polite. That's the bottom line reason. September 21st, 1327, after being deposed and imprisoned by his wife, Isabella, and her lover, Roger Mortimer, Edward II of England. This is Edward II of England. After being... Back that up. Back that up. After being deposed and imprisoned by his wife. Now, he's the king. He's the king. But his wife and her lover deposed him and imprisoned him. And then they murdered him by having a horn pushed into his anus through which a red-hot iron was inserted, burning out his internal organs without marking his body. Now, I must say that that was not what killed the king. I am thinking in attention to detail is what killed the king. In attention to detail. Because... When you're the king and your wife has a lover and they depose you and imprison you, something's up. And you should be noticing something is going wrong. My, my wife is with another man. They've deposed me. They've imprisoned me. Could something be wrong? And so you're talking about an inattention to detail. All right, now back it up. Back it up a little bit. Back it up. Here All right. So now, now, now how did they... So is, is something wrong? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, something's wrong. All right. So but, but the, how did they murder? By having a horn pushed into his butt through which a red-hot iron was inserted, burning out his internal organs. Okay, so... So this is, this, is, this is unbelievable inattention to details. This goes beyond inattention to detail. This it goes to sleight of hand. This is like, yes, we've we've imprisoned you, and and we look at look at the bird. Look at the bird flying away. Quick horn in his butt. Look at the bird, King. Look at the bird. It, I mean, how do you do that? How do you do that? That is an incredible inattention. To detail, bordering on sleight of hand. I gotta say, that's one of the worst things I've ever heard. I would take the bees. Yeah, yeah, I mean, hey. Whew. Blake Bailey says, remember his college professor telling the story and stopping because he said that <clears throat> you looked green. Yeah, I, I can imagine that. But hey, just look at the bird, look at the bird. You know? 
Okay, yeah, that is really gross. Mars gross. All right, May 31st, 1410. Martin of Aragon died from a combination of indigestion and uncontrollable laughing. According to tradition, Martin was suffering from indigestion because he ate an entire goose when his favorite jester, Bora, entered the king's bedroom. When Martin asked Bora where he had been, the jester replied, and this is a quote, out of the next vineyard where I saw a young deer hanging by his tail from a tree as if someone had punished him for stealing figs. This joke caused the king to die from laughter. All right, now, I believe that ultimately the king died from kindness. Now, as a former comedian, I know what it's like to deliver a joke that is just not funny. And... And and I, I know what a mercy laugh is like. You know, there's just like this this mercy laugh. This, uh, <laughs> hey, oh, uh, and you know what people say when something's not funny? Ha! <laughs> that's funny. That's funny. That's what they say when it's not funny. They say that's funny. And so it, it's a it, it's it's a mercy laugh. And if you're friends with a comedian, you know how to give a mercy laugh. If you're friends or family of a comedian, you know how to give a mercy laugh. I mean, when I was coming up. Uh, Brent Burns was the greatest around here. Mercy laughs. I would come and do stuff between Brent sets, and, and I, I wasn't funny. But Brent would go, <laughs> "That's funny. That's funny." It, it was it was a mercy laugh, and so I'm assuming that the king. Let's see that joke again. Let's see that joke again. I, I'm assuming that the king was friends with the jester. And wanted to make him feel good. Because when he said, where have you been? And the jester said, out of the next vineyard where I saw a young deer hanging by his tail from a tree as if someone had punished him for stealing figs. It's, it's not funny. And I think the king died because of kindness. I think he was faking a laugh. And he croaked because of it. Just trying to be nice to his comedian friend. Because th that joke's not funny. It's not good. It's not. That's not a good joke. I mean, that's... Whew, that's not a good joke. March, 1809. After seeing a circus knife swallower, a man named Cummings <clears throat> began actually swallowing knives. On one occasion, he swallowed four knives and quickly passed three with no ill health. He later swallowed 14 knives and after some days with abdominal pain, he passed all of them. He finally swallowed 20 knives and a clasp knife case but after a few days he had only passed the case he died after four years in pain on autopsy a knife blade and spring were found in his intestines and between 30 and 40 fragments of metal wood and horn in his stomach. Okay, so I think we know the basis of this death. He saw a knife swallower in the circus and said, <laughs> I can do that. And so he went home and started swallowing knives. This guy died of stupidity. He, he was just stupid. He died of stupidity. That, that's what killed him. It wasn't the knives. 
It was stupidity, bottom line. November 6th, 1816, Governor Morris died from an infection after using a whalebone to clear a blockage in his urinary tract. What killed him, ladies and gentlemen? I'll tell you what killed him. I mean, <clears throat> me? If I have a blockage in my urinary tract, I say, could you bring me the tiniest, thinnest something you can find? I have a blockage in my urinary tract. But no, he had a blockage in his urinary tract and asked for a whalebone. I'm thinking arrogance killed this guy. I'm thinking it was arrogance. I've got a blockage in my urinary tract. Somebody bring me a whalebone. <laughs> I'm thinking, Arrogance. Arrogance killed this guy. It's the only thing it could have been. <coughs> Dina Kilpatrick, and I thought stunts people try now are stupid. Yeah, I mean I mean this is this is history. This is history. Okay, what else we got? I'm sure the, the tide pods will be talked about in a couple hundred years still. The what? Oh yeah, I know. Yeah. They died eating a Tide Pod. You know, the, the laundry detergent? <sighs> July 1st, 1884. Sir William Payne Galway, a former British MP, died after sustaining severe internal injuries when he fell on a turnip while hunting. Now, this was odd, and so I did the research, and, and I looked, I had to look beyond his life, and I had to look at the culture of the day and what was going on, and I have come to the conclusion that lack of knowledge led to carelessness, and this is why he died from falling on a turnip, because it was, it was a lack of knowledge, with carelessness. Because I found that the Sunday before he died, there had been an article in the London Times. The Sunday before, that the article was, it, it revealed the five most common deaths by falling. One was falling from a castle. Uh, number two, falling on one sword. And number three, falling in love with the wrong person, which is a long, slow, agonizing death. And then number four, falling into a moat. And number five, the Sunday London Times falling on a turnip. If he had only read that article, he would have had the knowledge not to be careless when he was out riding. Oh, getting close to a turnip here. Just take a left. Early 1903, an unnamed person was beaten to death with a Bible during a healing ceremony gone wrong in Honolulu, Hawaii. He was being treated for malaria when his family summoned a kahuna who decided he was possessed by devils and tried to exorcise the demons by beating him with the Bible. That sounds like an episode of something. It does, doesn't it? Yeah, I'm thinking just... Uh, I, think, I think that's uh, this is probably just an example of... Over the years, you see people confusing their spiritual life and religion. And I think... Uh, 
religions just got too weighty. It was, it was religion that killed him. <laughs> it wasn't God. It wasn't the Bible. It's religion. Must have been one of those big Bibles you see. It was got definitely the, King James. Got the gold edges. It's about two feet tall. Yeah. Weighs about 10 pounds. Yeah. It was a weighty Bible. It was the King James, for sure. This was not the Living Bible. Okay, February 4th, 1912. Franz Richelt, a tailor and inventor, leapt from the Eiffel Tower and fell to his death wearing a parachute made from cloth. His own invention. He was asked by friends and authorities to use a dummy for the feet, but declined, saying, I intend to prove the worth of my invention. Now, that is a clear death by lack of wisdom. Because, back to the Bible, in the Bible, it said, you know, wisdom, many counselors bring wisdom. Many counselors, and and they're, they're don't do it, don't don't jump, you know, don't do this yourself. Use a dummy, don't do it, don't do it, don't jump off the Eiffel Tower, you, you know, with this piece of cloth, don't do it. But he ignored the counsel of many, and so he died from lack of wisdom. He said, "I will do it myself." Yes, you did. October twenty fifth, nineteen twenty. He. King Alexander of Greece, he was 27 years old, and he died of sepsis after being bitten by a palace steward's pet Barbary monkey in his garden while trying to break up a fight between his German shepherd and another monkey. <clears throat> okay, you've heard of poking your nose in where it doesn't belong? There it was. He did not... He did not have. He did. He, he he did not have any business in that fight. He didn't know what they were fighting about, and you know he couldn't tell them to get along or he, he was just he was just stuck in there. And there there you go. You get bit by a monkey, you die. November thirteenth, nineteen fifty two. Margaret Wise Brown, forty two, the author of Good Night Moon, had been previously admitted to the hospital for a cyst. To prove how healthy she was after treatment, she kicked her foot in the air, dislodging a blood clot in her leg. The blood clot quickly traveled to her brain. She died in emergency surgery. Margaret Wise Brown, author of Good Night Moon. Now, I gotta say, this is a sad one. But she, she died from an honest attempt at some excitement in her life. She kicked her foot in the air. I mean, this is the author of the most boring children's story of all time. And I mean, and she, she had to live with that. And she, she lived with that for years. I still read it to go to bed. Good night, chair. Good night, rug. Good night. Wall. Good night. Good night, man. Good night. Good night, chair. I mean, the woman could be forgiven for kicking her leg into the air at a genuine attempt for some excitement in her life, and it killed her. <sighs> 1987. Franco Brun, 22 an inmate at the Metro Toronto East Detention Center in Canada died trying to swallow a pocket-sized Bible. Very sad. This inmate, I think he died of innocence. It was only after a taste of religion. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, did you hear what I said? Was that funny? Okay. Um, here's the last one. We're going back to 401 BC. Mithridates, a Persian soldier who embarrassed 
his king's wife was executed by scafism. Now, I had to look up what scafism was. If you were going to be executed, uh, is there a hanging, lethal injection, scafism? I mean, I'm concerned about what it's going to be. Yeah. And, I, and, and you know, they still, they, in Texas, they, they execute people with lethal injection. Do you know that? Which I wonder, when you execute somebody with a lethal injection, do they still rub the alcohol on their arm? They, we don't want to infect you. We just want to kill you. It'd be cruel if you got an infection. Yeah. Cruel and unusual. Okay. Um, <clears throat> okay, so scafism. Here's, here's what they did. You take two large boards exactly alike. Now, this is 401 B.C. Is that when this was? Yeah, 401 B.C. Okay. He embarrassed the king's wife. Take two large boards exactly alike and make the victim lie down on one of them upon his back. Then cover him with the other. The head, hands, and feet are left outside, and the rest of his body is tied within. Offer him food. If he refuses to eat it, force him to do so by pricking his eyes with a knife. After he has eaten, drench him with a mixture of milk and honey, pouring it not only into his mouth, but all over his face. Keep his face continually turned toward the sun. His face should soon become completely covered up and hidden by a multitude of flies. Between the boards, he does what those who eat and drink eventually must do. Creeping things and vermin will spring out of the corruption and rottenness of the excrement and thus enter into the bowels of him and his body will be consumed. Now that was the recipe. The king's physician reported that Mithridates survived escapism, which is the insect torture. The king's physician reported he survived the insect torture for 17 days. And what did he do to embarrass the king's wife? All you husbands, just pay attention here. He put too much salad in his mouth when he ate. That was the crime. She couldn't stand it. And therefore, he was put to death by way of escapism. You know, it, it is... It is... Uh, It's ridiculous what humans can think to do to humans. It's inhuman. And uh, <clears throat> it makes me wonder what turns a mind to something like that. Have you ever thought about that? I mean, you know, these, these people thinking of these things, I mean, these were the, uh, I guess the, the serial killers of their day or something. The 
weirdos of their day. I mean, because I'm not, I'm not thinking a normal person thinks of this stuff. But it's there in history. Um, what could we do? I think uh, Thursday we'll have a much more uplifting show. I think we'll talk about something good, just like what are stupid things people did, or, uh, you know, who did the most of what in history, or, or uh, how can we... How can we, uh, how can we get better? You know, Proverbs warns, Mike Williams says, Proverbs warns of overeating in front of a king. I don't know. It's odd. I don't know that we want any comments on this one, but uh, this, this was strange, wasn't it? You know, it's. <clears throat> I I don't I don't mean to be the the like the. The ballast in your day, I, I mean it's just like. Usually, I, I think we have a high point with the blue plate, but I I think we have sunk to. I think this is as low as we can go. There is always an episode on the History Channel that covers this stuff at some point. Yeah, I think, I, I think for the future, I'm going to leave it to the History Channel. Sounds good. I don't really like to think of this. Um, hey, you want to know something funny while, while you're going through this? Yeah. And you kept saying the years, and then you'd say A.D. When I was in, uh, and, and I think of this every time I see that something has the year A.D. on it. When I was in um, elementary school, we were talking about something, and someone said something about the year A.D., and... They asked me about, you know, well, what is what is A.D.? And I said confidently, I was like, well, that's how many years after the Declaration of Independence. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think anything that you say confidently. <laughs> Did they buy it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, I think that would be a good show one day. Why don't you guys think of things that you have told your little brothers and little sisters or things you've told your cousins, or things you've told a dumb friend that you knew it was wrong and they believed it. I think that might be a good show. Be a good one. I think that might be a good show. Christy, my sister, are you still there? I think there's probably a lot of things that I told her. Like the night that we got to go home from church by ourselves. I was 12, and Christy was like seven. And we got to go home by ourselves because mom and daddy still had choir practice. And we were there by ourselves, and Christy was upstairs, and I had my BB gun, and I did something, and I broke the, lamp, the light above, and the light, the light fixture, shattered and it it came down and it cut my head just a little bit and I had just a little dot of blood so I squeezed it and 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 I said ah, ah, and and Christy comes down the stairs and said what what I said I can't believe you did that I can't believe you did that and she said what what I said you were stomping around up there he you made the light fall and the light fell on my head, and it cut me. Ha! Oh, I'm bleeding. I'm bleeding. Shoot! I, 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 did, I didn't know that I. Hey, yes, you were. You're stomping around, Christy. You're stomping around. And oh, oh, give me some water. Give me some water. It's, so she gets me some water. And, 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 I, and I said, I said, I said, I, I don't know what mom and dad are gonna do. <laughs> you broke their their favorite light. It, 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 so, oh my God! I'm in trouble. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I tell you what, I can, I can cover for you. I can, I can say that it just fell, and we don't know how it fell. <laughs> as long as you do everything I say for the rest of your life. And that, like, lasted for a couple of years. I got a couple of years out of that. 
I mean, cause, because 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 every time Chrissy would not want to do what I said, I would say, oh, oh, the the light of my head. Oh, my head. Oh, okay, okay, okay. How could you do that to little Miss Sunbeam? Yes, Christy. Yes, yes, yes. I did. <coughs> <laughs> okay. So, be thinking of your stories. What did you, what, how did you scam your brothers? How did you scam your sisters? <coughs> Christy was, she was, uh, she was just a little, a little monster. You know, because I remember one time she had me backed into a corner with a baseball bat. And she was swinging, and I, 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 I don't know what I had done. I had nothing, I'm sure. I had done nothing, I'm sure. But I would, I would truly, I would. Christy said, you blamed it on me, and I was okay with that, because I knew Mom and Dad wouldn't punish me. You knew you'd be in trouble, but not me. Really? Really? So you did me a favor, huh? Oh my God, <sighs> Christy, she loved, uh, she loved Leif Garrett. Remember Leif Garrett, the teeny bopper, Leif Garrett. She just loved him. She loved him, and and she was little, and she just loved him. And I would, and I would torment her. I would say, oh, that's a nice poster you have of Leif Garrett. She says, it's, it's Leif Garrett. Yes, that's what I said. Leif Garrett. It's, it's Leif Garrett. Yes, Leif Garrett. It's Leif Garrett. And, and I would say, are you, are you crying? Did you cry for me? 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 And, oh, she would just come unglued. Just unglued. So Christy, I know you're sitting at home and your husband, Steve, is probably watching too. And so Steve, the next time Christy has a tear come to her eye, just get in her face and go, you, you crying? You crying, little baby? You, you mean little baby? I'm not a baby! I'm not a baby! <laughs> All right, we'll see you Thursday. The Blue Play Special, bye-bye.